two suitcases and got on a plane so I could go to school, so I could have a better chance in life, and this, this isn't what I came here for. Woo! Let's go, let's go. We're protesting. What, you want to pay more for school? No. <laughs> let's go. Get out of work. Go for work today. Hi. Hello. <laughs> well, you're not going to walk out? What happened? <laughs> it's called a Tobin tax. And uh, that is a tax that New York State instituted a while ago that during the Reagan administration was shifted. Uh, what that basically is, is a not, point, not 5%, not 0.5%, but 0.05% tax on large-scale financial institutions like AIG, Wall Street, large-scale financial transactions of currency that basically led us to this, for lack of a better word, shithole of a financial crisis that we're in right now. In, in order, what do you call it, what happened basically during the Reagan administration was that they reversed this tax as a rebate. If we had this tax in place today, it is estimated that instead of a $7 billion deficit, we have a $7.5 billion surplus. I don't know about you guys, but that sounds like it would just about cover a lot of these educational problems. Now, though, what it comes down to is why are we giving this money back? This money is there. It's in place. We just spent a lot of money giving these financial institutions, bailing them out. Why don't we take it back for the things that we need and not the millions and billions of dollar bonuses that these shipbirds up at the tops of these institutions are getting. Wake up! Wake up! We got things to talk about! In 2008, um, the federal government bailed out banks to the tune of $700 billion. That was the largest bailout in history, and basically um, that amount, to give it some kind of substance, because it's hard to imagine what $700 billion is, but it's basically the cost of the Marshall Plan, Louisiana Purchase, the Korean War, the New Deal, the Iraq War, Vietnam, and NASA combined, and that's prices adjusted, adjusted for inflation. That's how much the federal government spent on bailing out banks, and it was on the taxpayer payer dollar. We are part of the, the uh, movement overall with students getting screwed, with teachers getting screwed, with our high schools getting their funding cuts, with bigger classroom sizes, and it's an attack on middle class, it's an attack on workers, it's an attack on our generation. So we're here to support you. And as far as Andrew Cuomo goes, if you paid attention, he's gonna cut he's gonna give back the tax rebate on millionaires. Five billion dollars a year in the state budget that could pay for education for everybody, and he's gonna give it back to the millionaires this year because he doesn't want to tax them anymore. We need the money, middle class needs the help, we need to get on top of it. Last November, we held a large public assembly. I see many faces in here who were there. At that public assembly, we democratically reached consensus on three demands that we as students wanted to present to President Phillip. The first demand was to reverse his decision to deactivate the five programs. The second demand was to change the process by which these decisions are made. The way this decision was made was behind closed doors, without student input, in a non-transparent, non-accountable way. That is bullshit. We demand that these decisions need to be made in a democratic, participatory manner in which students... <laughs> to restore full funding to SUNY because the root of these cuts came from budget cuts from the state. The president should not have chosen to cut core academic programs as a result, but the origin lies in the decrease in public funding for higher education that has periodically occurred over the last five years. We asked the president to stop supporting pieces of legislation like FIA, the Public Higher Education Empowerment and Innovation Act, which try to privatize SUNY, increase tuition to students, and promote a private neoliberal model of the university rather than actually lobby for us and to lobby for funding for SUNY and to fight to oppose tuition increases. So those are our three demands. A week after we de delivered them to the president, we said you have 50 days in which to respond to us. He actually, in his defense, met with us the next week. We had a two and a half hour meeting in which he made it perfectly clear that he would not meet either our first or our second goal. He was not going to withdraw his decision to cut the five programs. He was not going to open the process and make it more democratic and accountable. The only area in which he showed some inclination to work on a, with us 
was to lobby the state. That I paid for my education. I took out my loans. There are no, there's no one behind my back. I have myself and I'm dependent on myself. Now, I did not come here in order to lose out on my education when I'm spending $6,500 for loans on a public school. This is a public school. We're all here to learn for, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm democracy. sorry. People. For democracy. A better life. A better life. Thank you. <laughs> well, in all seriousness, we cannot afford to let the president, these people who are making what? Seven, $763,000 a year for our tuition of what? 10000 Can they not take, you know, cuts? Is it really that hard? What Colin is handing you is the salaries of 40 high-paid administrators at this school. At the top of that list, you will read a number. It's around $740,000, okay? That is more than Barack Obama makes. That man is the highest paid state employee in the state. None of us have ever taken his class. None of us can take his class. Yet, we pay his bills. So, people always say, well, you know, it cuts a cut. Where's the money going to come from? If we look at this list, I'm going to break something down. It's really simple. It's called a public pivot option. And what a public pivot option is based on is the idea that when a budget shortfall comes through, you should not fire working folks. You should not fire the janitors or the teachers. You should defer some of the hundreds of thousands of dollars that the people at the top make. Last week, the SUNY Chancellor made her State of the University address. In that, she released her five-year plan for SUNY, which basically included she would create a pot of money that SUNY schools would have to compete over, um, pitting SUNYs against each other for funding, and also part of her plan was a five, year, five years of incremental tuition increases for students because she said it's no longer politically possible to get any money for the state from the state. So here's how it works. Say there's a budget cut. We say there's got to be a pivot point. The pivot point I'm going to pick today is $150,000. So if you make 150 grand a year, you're open to be taken from the pivot. Everybody below that, you're safe. You got your job, you got your compensation, you got your hours, right? Why do we do this? Well, basically because if you make $150,000 a year, and I take 8% of what you make, that's $12,000. I make 12 a year, many people in this room make 12 a year and support their fucking families on it, okay? They can afford 12, I can't. Why do they take it from me? Makes no sense. Again, it's the rich taking from the poor. That is not what this country is about. So, really quickly, well, I'm going to say, well, it is, but it shouldn't be, God damn it! We have to still get attention of the big people that sign those bills. So, really, come on February 4th, and that too, talk to your assembly people back home, because it's the same broke high schools back in the city, you know? So just get involved in that.